This is a building one kilometre high we designed recently. You may well ask why we did that. Well, you remember how lifts worked in Minority Report. We designed something like that because we think the current lift systems are completely mad. What you need is a system which is a sequential system, like a train or a bus system. Lift shafts are the main constraint on one kilometre building and on shorter ones. With a sequential system, we only need six shafts instead of 60. Let us look what can be done with such a lift system. This technology demonstrated one kilometre building is very slim because all the structure is now on the outside of the building. The core is completely gone. On plan, the building is rotationally symmetric, but the lift or funiculator system weaves around from side to side for universal access. There's a large hole on the, on the middle, effectively giving us two towers, separated by what we call the central park. The structure on the outside means that internally very large spans are possible. We achieve this by having a mega frame every 16 floors from which we hang the floors. The bottom floor can then be column free, of course. It's a huge building, much larger than Burj Khalifa, the currently tallest building in the world. It would sway less than Burj Khalifa, it is 50% stiffer. A digital model, of course, means that you can do 3D prints. This model is about one meter high. The model shows the pods and tracks and is a great illustration to really understanding the building. We have plans for a 1 to 500 model with actual moving pods. An extremely important aspect is the dynamic scheduling, which plans the movement of the pods and the sorting of passengers by destination. The aim is that nobody will ever change pod, but will be taken directly to their destination. One part of that is an intelligent app which anticipates where passengers are coming from and their destinations. So let us take a quick ride up the tower. At the bottom we connect to the metro, we then travel to the ground floor station. If we get off, off on the bottom third, the pod goes on the third stopping track. We travel at 10 meters per second, so wind resistance is not an issue, but it is the fastest that is comfortable in air popping terms. We stop at the central park, which has the entrances to the many hotels in the tower. Altogether, we expect a population of 20 to 30,000 inhabitants. At the top of the tower, the loop both serves to turn the pods around and also let you have the most spectacular fun ride in the universe. We're putting the model into Oculus to get a real feel for the experience. So how does the pod work? It has to rotate in two planes to cope with, with the twisting track. This is a model prototype showing how the pod floors will always remain horizontal even as the track takes on any orientation. This is only part one. In the future we'll post more videos to show more. The work was supported by Turin in Sweden and the building was designed as a technology demonstrated by PLP Architecture.